Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome to part two of my seed sowing weekend. If you missed yesterday's episode, the last in the series, you can find it up here. It was all about this compost, sorting through it, and we have got absolutely loads of good quality stuff that you can see here. Today is gonna to be all about getting the seed started, but before I put anything actually into the soil, I need to come up with a bit of a plan <laughs> because to be honest, I haven't been that organized this year to date. So first we need to have a little look around and just decide what is gonna go where. So these are our four main beds that we're gonna be looking at today and I'm just going to have a rough plan of them. Um, there's also the purple spring broccoli bed, which was a, a brassica bed that you should just be able to see in the foreground there. Behind that, there's another bed giving over to just so much garlic. <laughs> But um, there's a few crops that are gonna need a whole bed to themselves. I'm thinking alliums can have their own bed, brassicas as well as potatoes. Potatoes will definitely need their own one. And last year I had a bit of an issue with onion white rot, which affects alliums and is basically impossible to get rid of. And that was in the ones up here. So it might be a little bit futile, but my thinking is I'll move the alliums further down. We had leeks in here that did absolutely fine last year. So I'm gonna move the alliums further down the plot to this one with the black plastic. Brassicas, I think I can put in here. They will need a feed though. That, that This bed had quite a lot of crops. Uh, it had some brassicas cropped, a lot of potatoes, and then loads of leeks. So the brassicas can go in here, but they're gonna need a lot of feeding. And then here is probably fine for potatoes. I can't see any reason why that would be an issue. That leaves us with this one which is gonna basically be for everything else. Uh, I think salad crops, I'm gonna try and do at home in the garden because coming out here and realizing how much space is gonna be taken up by other stuff this time of year, uh, just it kind of makes sense probably to do it at home. So this is where I'm gonna be putting things like carrots, maybe some beetroot, radishes, that kind of thing. So a lot of root crops, um, which might do okay in this soil, they might do really badly. I don't really have a, a specific bed that's given over to creating really fine soil or containers or anything like that for root crops. But I experimented with carrots in this bed last year and they came out really nicely actually. I was, I was very, very pleasantly surprised. So there we have a rough idea of what's going in which bed. I was quite surprised when I came to plan this out just now very roughly because Last year it felt like I had loads and loads of space and this year it feels like I'm really running out of space and I could do with more. And that's despite making two new beds kind of over winter. So I think that really comes from inexperience and last year planting stuff way too close together. I did it with pretty much every crop um, and sometimes it went okay, but other times it was just a really bad idea and it did not work out. So this year I've got a much better idea of how much space everything takes up, especially things like brassicas, you know, they get huge. So it's really good being able to plan that this year properly. Anyway, it's time for us, I think, to get in the greenhouse. I've got to show you the stuff that's already in there, already germinated, because I did plant a few things a little while back. So three weeks ago, the 28th of February is when I first sowed these, and I've got a couple of trays. There's not loads of stuff, but, um, and, it's not the most successful, but this is the first one with very decorative labels. In here, we've got a mixture of alliums and brassicas. I've only gone for one onion, which is the Red Baron, which is a new one, red onion, obviously. Never tried that before. I did try Bedfordshire Champion seeds last year, but they did not go very well. And these are looking okay. There's giant winter leeks in here, which are the same ones that I grew last year. They're looking okay. I think a few of these cells have dried out actually and then others have had a little bit too much water. I've not been particularly attentive with these. I kind of stuck them in, left them. Purple spraying broccoli, doing okay. We've got six seedlings that have come up, which is pretty much exactly how many plants I want to grow to full term. So that's good. We've got earliest of all spring cabbage, which is the main cabbage I grew last year, which did okay. Um, I don't, I think it was mostly user error. Why I really only got like two cabbages out of the whole of last year. So that wasn't great, considering I must have planted out seven or eight. And over here, we've got the Primo cabbage, which is a new, a new one that I'm doing this year that I've never tried. Um, but this has had really good germination. This is new seed and the earliest of all cabbage is slightly older seed. And I think that's reflected with the germination rate. So I need to sow a few more of these today because otherwise there won't be much going on. 
have a look at what else. I have a whole tray here of completely unsuccessful marigold seedlings. Um, I don't know, I've got one out of five whole rows here. Only one has germinated, so I don't know if they're gonna pop up in a little bit or I've done something wrong, but they did take a while last year, which is why I wanted to start them a bit earlier this year, because um, they just add that nice little bit of color. And lastly, we have in here a little seed tray with leafy stuff. So this is spinach on one side and all year round lettuce on the other. Grew both of these last year, some success with the spinach. It kind of got, either got, got by pests or bolted quite often, but when it's there, it's nice. I'll probably end up taking these home, like I said earlier, because um, there's a spinach in the wrong place here, because it's gonna be slightly easier to grow at home. They need a lot of attention and there's just no space up here, really. But um, yeah, that's what's in the greenhouse already. So nothing spectacular, but it's nice to have a few things on the go already. But today is the big day where pretty much everything is getting planted. I've got loads of stuff in a big box here. This is full of stuff, let's have a look. We've got my seed box, which I'll go into in detail. I had a really good sort out in here actually. And I grouped everything up in terms of like their families of planting, so it, it goes well with my spreadsheet, which I actually made for planning and planting out. We've got a couple of bags of onion sets, potentially a hundred onions here. Uh, we've got Sturon on one hand and Centurion on the other. Ne never grown either of them, but we'll put those in today, I think, hopefully. Is that right? Yep. And um, see how they go. And as well, I've got this giant bag of Aaron Pilot potatoes. Uh, these have chitted quite nicely because these have just been in the conservatory, so they've had a bit of light. And these are ready to go in today, pretty much. I'm keeping it really simple with my potatoes this year. I've just got Aaron Pilot as my first aisle leaves, and then I've got a big old bag like this of King Edwards to go in a bit later in the year. Um, last year I had a few too many on the go and it was a little bit overcomplicated, so just wanted to simplify it. Big bag of these, big bag of King Edwards. Really exciting. Let's have a look in the seed box. So as you can see, I've sorted these into family names. We've got brassicas, summer squashes, that kind of thing, salads and leafy vegetables, alliums, onions, and we've got some herbs, flowers, companion plants, that kind of thing, carrots, parsnips, root vegetables, and then we've got tomatoes. My chili seeds are elsewhere, but this should be really handy. So what's going out in the ground today? Well, I've got carrots to go in first, and I've got four varieties here today, three of which I'm gonna be putting in the ground. First, we've got the Early Nant 5. <laughs> this is like a classic carrot. We've got the Paris Market Atlas, which is really cool. It's a globe shape, super funky. We've got Purple Sun. This is the one that's going out a little bit later. Also very funky and interesting, as the name suggests. They're purple and well, they're more like black, um, but really cool. And then we've got the Fly Away variety. This is an F1 and I grew this last year. It's bred specifically to keep the carrot fly away. And last year it did, I had no sign of carrot fly. So there you go. We've got our onions, our potatoes and our carrots to go in today. But also there's another root crop, which is parsnip. Now, I've never grown parsnip before. Super intrigued and really excited to do these. Got two varieties, pretty similar, standard. We've got the Countess F1 and we've got the Hollow Crown, which is a horrible name. It's not very, very nice. But um, this one's a little bit damaged. It's also a seed tape uh, and, ah. Oh. I didn't think about exactly where these were gonna go in the bed. I've not got space for these at the moment. These can go out in May. So I think what I'm gonna do is wait till the purple spring broccoli is out and then put those in there. So I think that's all for today going into the ground. So we'll go outside now because I'm starting to overheat in here. We'll get stuff planted in the ground and then we'll come back inside because there's a few more things to do. I love it at this time of year. There's so much, ah, oh, it's great. So first job on the list outside is getting the onions planted, but first we've got to get this plastic covering off and see what's underneath. So what the hell is this? I think I might need some new black plastic matting. I mean, that one is already falling apart, but this is not what is meant to happen. <laughs> Look at this, absolute weed bonanza. Some really big stuff in here as well, dandelions, geraniums, that sort of thing. Bit of bramble as well, down here. What a frustration. I think next year I'll just use cardboard, to be honest. It's done better than the plastic. 
You can see this one's actually started to break down a bit. So, unfortunately, I've got a bit of weeding to do before I can put anything in here. So, let's get this weeded and uh, then we'll start planting some onions in here. So you can see me here just going through and spacing out 10 centimetres between each planned onion and I've got 30 centimetres between the rows which is quite a lot but I found that actually it's better to have that bit extra because you're less likely to scalp an onion with the hoe as you go through weeding. So here we go, we've got our onion sets and a few of these are going to look a little bit sad so we'll put those to one side but all the good ones they just get pushed straight into the soil. Um, and it's quite, it's quite nerve wracking with this soil because it's so clay heavy. Uh, I don't really enjoy it. Um, I'm actually gonna get the dibber and just give them a slightly bigger hole because trying to push these through the clay feels like you're about to decimate the bulb. Push it in. It needs quite a big dib. Drop it in and then you know, just cover it up. So there we go, first line of onions in, first thing in the ground for the year, uh, apart from the garlic, but that was last year, that doesn't really count, so this is super exciting. Um, what I'm going to do, I think, is have a space down the middle for the red barren onions I'm trying to grow from seed, and then put the other set, the sturon, down the other side, and we'll just have three lines in here, plenty of space to get the hoe in, and hopefully this will be pretty good. I'm a little bit worried because the soil is so clay heavy and it's so difficult to push in, but hopefully these guys will be okay. And these are pretty big and strong. Um, and then I'm gonna top dress these with a bit of compost from the bay. And, and in fact, just, just now as I was looking in the bay, one of the old boys came along and he complimented my compost. He said, you must know what you're doing. You must know what you're doing from one of the old boys. That is, that is pretty big for an allotment. Like that is, uh, that is high praise. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's good news, but um, let's get the second line in. Second line, all measured out. Interestingly, these Thuron, not only are the onion sets a much higher quality, they're much kind of bigger, plumper, look a lot healthier. They also need a bit further spacing. So the other ones were only 10 centimetres apart, these ones are 15. So I'm predicting we're gonna have much better growth from these. And what I'm gonna do is put in maybe half an extra row uh, of these as well, um, instead of the Centurion. And that's just because these look a little bit nicer, and like they're gonna be a bit more successful. So better to have more of these. Let's get them in. So there we go, second line of things in, this is the straw on onions, centurion over there. That's mostly so that I remember because I never label anything that goes in the ground. I just trust that I've got it on video. What could go wrong? Anyway, <laughs> time to just quickly top dress these with a bit of the compost and they should be good. Of course, it would have been preferable to apply this compost in autumn and let it settle over winter, but I didn't have very much available to me then. And hopefully this will suffice and give them just enough of a boost that we'll still get a decent crop. 
There we go, it's far from perfect, but hopefully it'll just be a little bit of an extra kind of feed for the soil. Um, this kind of helps as well, because hopefully it'll make it clear where the lines of onions are. I'm just gonna go and smooth it a little bit. It really does feel lovely. And it's a very nice feeling to know that it's homemade compost. It's all just come from waste products from the garden and the kitchen. It's very cool. So this bed, this is going to be a little bit chaotic. Apologies if it hurts your eyes or your sensibilities. We've got white Lisbon spring onions in here and they've not done much, okay? But they're here. I sowed them at the end of August and I'm very proud that I managed to grow something over winter. So I want to leave these in and I'm going to be planting around them. This is also good, however, because alliums are a really good companion plant for our carrots and they're meant to help deter carrot root fly. I'm gonna pull up the leeks, they've gotta go. So we'll have quite a lot of room for onions in here and I wanna leave some space for successional sowing. I wanna put some other carrots in here in May as well. But other than that, I don't think there's too much to say on it. So let's get them sown. Let's get rid of this cardboard. Definitely done its job nicer than the plastic and Lovely, there's loads of worms under there. As a, as a kind of rule of thumb, I'm going to be doing 20 centimetre spacing between my lines of carrots here. So, will these drills be straight? Absolutely not. Will they grow carrots? Yes, yes they will. There's our 20 centimetres, more or less. Even this looks a little bit close for me. Once we've got the soil up, we can just about get the hoe in there. So you might be wondering why I'm drilling out the whole bed. And the reason why is just so I can count how many rows potentially I can have and do a little bit of planning. I just like to put one in here. And another 20 there. Join them up and eyeball the rest. It's fine, isn't it? That's fine. So, first one going in is the flyaway. Very important when you're sowing carrot seeds to try not to sow them too thick. You want a nice thin sowing because the more thinning you have to do, then the more likely you'll bruise the leaves when you bruise the leaves, that is what attracts the carrot root fly. The smell of those leaves travels very far and can find you from miles away. And come and hunt down your precious carrots. So make sure not too thick. So fly away first, and then next we're going for the Paris Market Atlas, these globes. And then next up, we have the early naunt. The early naunt, which I'm hoping should be ready about July. But you can also be sowing these as late as July, apparently. We shall see. There's always so many seeds in these packets, it's tempting to go absolutely wild, but I really don't have much space given over for each of these, you know, a couple of rows. It's not a lot. And I'm trying to get one seed out at a time, but you never can, realistically. These seeds are so small. You always have these little clumps coming up. Sometimes it's okay to leave them like that, kind of multi-sown style, which is very popular. Um, but. We'll just see, won't we? We'll see what comes up. It's a bit of an experiment like last year, really. Uh, hopefully, they'll do okay. I'm just gonna top these with a little bit of compost. This is lovely, silky, fine stuff. Once again, this won't be enough to feed them throughout the year or anything like that, but it's just to give the soil 
a little bit of a boost because I did take a lot of crops out of here without putting much back in last year. Just kind of drill back over. And I do like to as well just mark these out with um, little bamboo stakes just so that I know where to look for the carrots coming up uh, and don't mistake them for weeds or anything like that. Then I like to just try and give them a gentle watering in. Emphasis on try. You don't need too much because this soil is quite moist. Uh, but we haven't got rain on the way for a few days, so that should do it. Very nice and very exciting. So I mentioned at the start that I had an issue with onion white rots affecting my alliums up this end of the plot and I've got a few leeks here. They look pretty healthy on the surface, um, but let's pull them out and see if there's any sign that onion white rot is affecting their roots. It's still not gonna affect my planting plan, the onions are going in at the end, but I just wanna have a look at these, just for my own curiosity. Me, first glance, these seem pretty healthy. These were kind of put in multi sown, as you can see. Growing up, seemingly okay. Let's get this soil off and have a look at the roots. So, you can see I've removed all five leek plants, and to me, they look really healthy. They're definitely on the smaller side, but I didn't give them that much feed, and they were very much neglected, planted too close together. But these look totally fine to me, which is a good sign. And it indicates that although the onions I had did suffer from some kind of fungus, it wasn't the dreaded onion white rot, or there's something about the seasonality of leeks, and the fact that they go in later in the season maybe, that means these aren't affected. But um, hey, a nice spring crop of leek. And what goes well with leek? Well, of course, it's potatoes. <laughs> it's time to get the potatoes in the ground. That shouldn't take me long. I'm just gonna do one long row of Aaron Pilot and leave space for one long row of King Edwards. Let's get it in. So here we are back in the greenhouse and I have a feeling this video is starting to get very long. So I'll just talk very briefly about what my plans are in here for the rest of the day. The first thing I wanna do is a few brassicas. I picked up this earlier and showed you that my initial germination has been okay, but not great. So I'm gonna do a little few, of, a little few, a few more sowings of the purple sprouting broccoli and the earliest of all cabbage. Re realistically, I don't know if I have to, but I just like to have a couple more in the bank just in case anything goes wrong. Slugs start to come in the greenhouse, something like that. Um, so the earliest of all cabbage is gonna have a few more. The purple spring broccoli will have a few more, but also I'm gonna start this one as well, which is Romanesco broccoli. Uh, like I said recently, I hate broccoli, um, but this kind of fractal stuff looks amazing and I've never tried it before, so who knows? It might be quite nice. It might be horrible, but I'm gonna try and grow a couple of these. It says you're meant to sow them directly outdoors in May, June. I'm gonna try it in the greenhouse, see what happens. Maybe try one out straight direct later in May, June as well. We'll see, but kind of interesting and cool. Um, I might do a few more onions as well, the Red Baron, now that I've seen how much space out there there is for the red onions. The other thing I wanted to talk about just briefly is my plan for salads this year, because like I say, not much space up here for individual plants. So what I have is a selection of seeds. Uh, we've got kale, we've got lolo rossa there, which is like a red lettuce, looks really cool. And I've got this, which is like a mix of different salad leaves. This wasn't intentional, these all came free with the Grow Your Own magazine, like a lot of my seeds this year, um, because I am not good at planning. Uh, but the idea is to take a leaf out of Tony C. Smith's book, famous YouTuber, um, not famous, you know, famous in our, in our gardening community, and what he does is he fills this, lots of other people do this as well, they fill these kind of trays with like a mix of different leaves that you can just cut when you want your salad, take them away, and they'll just regrow. 
when you want the next one, try again. And you have like three, two or three of these, three or four, depending on how much salad you eat. And, um, you know, as you cut from one, there's others regrowing so at, at different stages. But on top of that, I'm going to be growing the spinach and the all year round lettuce. And those ones I'll crop more traditionally, you know, take the bottom leaves, the Charles Dowding way. Um, so that should be really cool. I'm hoping for a little bit of a different approach with salad. And most of this can be grown back at home, either just in the conservatory or I'll try and make up some little pots or something like that uh, where they can live on the patio. So, like I say, I think this video is going on quite a while and the longer I spend in here, the shinier and shinier my face gets. So <laughs> no one wanted to see that, so I'll say <laughs> thank you ever so much for watching. Please remember to do all the YouTube stuff if you want to and hopefully I'll see you again next time.